Dear Lord, for all those who have come and gone from our chapel, that you watch over them. We pray that they're still in your word, that they will return to the sheepfold soon. And we pray for Israel and for our nation, for thy kingdom to come, that it will be thy will that will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And we pray for those first responders who are on the front lines every day and our military who are in arms way or who are about to go into arms way. We pray for their safety and, res and their speedy return home. And as always, Father, we pray for the lost, those that do not have an opportunity this day to receive thy truth. Now, Father, I pray that you open up our eyes that we may see. I pray that you open up our ears that we may hear thy words as it is written, as it will be you that speaks to us this day. In Yahshua's precious holy name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we're getting back into our Father's Word today. We left off in Matthew a couple weeks ago before the big old snowstorm. Matthew chapter 18, and we had just finished verse 14. Talking about the little children and what it, what it was like to... Uh, uh, come to the kingdom, come to our Father, and and what it meant to come to the Lord as a little child, to be to be teachable. But today we're getting into really at this time Father was putting together a structure of the church, the first <clears throat> Christian church. And we know Peter was going to be the uh, well, of course, Christ was the head of the church, but Peter was going to be the uh, the uh, rock. Peter meaning rock. The be, I don't want to call him um, the pope. I don't want to call him the pope, but uh, he was going to be once Christ's ascension into the kingdom. He wanted a Christian church established. But he wanted to establish with order. So you have to have a, a head of the church and, and the like, people running it and operating it. Well, at this point, it was going to be the disciples. So Christ knew because at this point, there's already dissension. Remember what had just happened. Even the apostles themselves were arguing who was going to be the greatest. And Paul, or uh, better said, our Lord had to put them in order and... and um, Cut, the, cut their knees out from under them, if you will, to teach them, look, you, you want to be great, you've got to be a server of all people. So today we're going to start off with um, what it's, what's going to happen in the church when you have someone that is going against the teachings, that are going against uh, doing what's right, even to a brother. Now, who's a brother? Well, the Lord taught us about who a brother is. Can anyone tell me who a brother in Christ would be? Everyone that believes in Christ. Everyone that believes in Christ and does the will of our Father. Yeah. You know. okay. And so you're going to have people that come up against you at times, and, they're, and when I say you, I'm talking about you personally, not a church body or anything yet. But in other words, a person comes up against you and they cause you problems. Either they sin against you or they, they, they uh, uh, do something wrong against you or vice versa. Well, how are we to deal with that? Well, he gives us an order of things of how we should deal with this situation. But we got to understand, we're not talking about like a Christian and a heathen. We're talking about two Christians because it's in the body of Christ. It's in, the, it's in uh, togetherness, having, having the Lord as our Savior. So with that being said, please open your Bibles with, with me and go to Matthew chapter 18. We'll pick up with verse 15 with wisdom from our Heavenly Father and it reads, Moreover, if thy brother, now this brother would technically be a brother in Christ. If thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him, or it could be her, his fault 
between thee and him alone. In other words, you don't bring it in on Facebook. You don't bring it in on Winky Dink or whatever the case may be. You bring it just between you and that person. If he shall hear thee, in other words, if they have a pliable heart and will listen to you, okay, thou hast gained thy brother. So in other words, one person has sinned against you and you haven't sinned against them. And you go to them and you talk to them and they will receive you openly and you can discuss the situation openly, not without... You know, this may start out even with heated language. But you come to a mutual agreement of something that was negative and then that person you get through to and they hear you and they become, as it says, has gained thy brother. In other words, you dealt with the situation, which means there's no longer a situation. Now, that is the ultimate of something good happening and it's being resolved pretty quickly but it continues 16 if he will not hear thee now what would that mean well he's got a hard heart you know he's arrogant or whatever the case may be won't listen to what you got to say then take with thee one or two more one or two more from where it says. Huh? It says. It does. That yes. in the mouth of two or three witnesses, yes. every word may be established. Yes. Now, how do these people become witnesses? Hey, but one word. How? They saw and heard it. They saw and heard it, or they were told the situation. That's not a witness. No, that's your that See, that's, that's where a lot of people misinterpret this. Yes. They think, all right, well now we need to tell two or three other people no. of what's going on. That's not a witness. No. That's not a witness. But are they witnessing <coughs> the aftermath, the conversation no. between the two? Some people want to use it that way. They mm -hmm. want to say, well, I went to that person and I couldn't deal with that person, so I'm going to go over here in the church now, probably, because we're dealing with Christian brotherhood. I'm going to go over here in, in, in my brotherhood and I'm going to tell two or three more people what went on. Well, what are they hearing? They're just hearing your side of it. Mm -hmm. and, if they, and, if, and see, this is where the problem lies. They're not really witnesses. They didn't witness the situation. Now, if this happened in front of other people, and there was more than one person that was affected. They have witnesses. Now you got witnesses. They saw and heard both sides of the situation. Yes. Now you got witnesses. Yes. So our Lord says, look, you got witnesses. Take those witnesses now to help edify or build up to <laughs> resolve the situation. <coughs> so you got, yes. There was no witnesses. Well. Then how are you going to take witnesses? Then, then, then none of this applies if there is okay let's let's take this to a court okay. a legal court situation today you got a person you're has everyone all of us ever been in a court situation <laughs> we don't need to go there yeah but the point is have yes, you, have you, you dealt with court at any point in time or been around it in the anything in, by the way jury duty donna's got to go on the eighth i got to go on the ninth really I'm February. I'm going to get 75 year, year exempt. Well, I got a way to go. <laughs> when you but get anyway, 75 year exempt? I think it's 72. Wow. But, anyways, um, if you want me. In, in a court situation, you have a person, uh, uh, a lawyer calls mm -hmm. somebody up to the witness stand, mm -hmm. and they ask that person what they saw or didn't see. That makes them a witness. Why? Because they saw or heard certain situations. That's what this is. That that person saw or heard certain situation go down. Have direct knowledge of. Have direct knowledge. In other words, they can make and, and come up with their own opinion of what's going on. 
Now, why does our Lord tell us to take two or three witnesses? Because you may have a wrong spin on things because of a number of different reasons. Yes, that's part of it. That was one of the things I, I had to add this, but that was, was a key thing when I was talking about my situation. I did not follow the law. There were two other witnesses that I did not go to. They were young, but I did not do what he told me to do before I did, did the execution. And that was wrong, and I, I, I've learned that now. You, if you're going to do something, you better follow what he tells you to do. Well, that's what this is talking about. Yes, and you'll do it the right way if you do it his way. It, the outcome will be the right. Yeah. So, those two, two uh, or three witnesses mm -hmm. you take, and that person still doesn't listen. Okay. Listen. Verse 17, mm. and if he shall neglect to hear them, mm. tell it. Notice they're not witnesses now. It says, tell it unto the church. In other words, the church isn't the witness. Mm -mm. You're now taking the person who has the problem. And you're taking the two or three people that are witnesses. Now you're bringing the four of you before the church. And saying, look, this is what's happened, mm -hmm. and this is the situation. But why do it before <coughs> the church? Because we're dealing with the brotherhood. We're dealing with members of the church who are going at it. First it was private, but then it was brought up before these witnesses who already knew the situation. So not that but private. that person now... Well, when I say private, it's yes. a small group. But, but now we're opening up to public, everybody. Like a public not public. Yeah. We're bringing it up to, to the church body. Yeah. We're not yelling it out in the newspapers across. In God's world, that's public. You know. Yes, but it's yeah. in the house of God. Yes. So, but if he ne neglect to hear the church, in other words, whatever the church comes up with is... A, a, a judgment call of what yeah. should be done. It's like a court. Like a court. Get your witnesses. Let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Mm -hmm. Now what does that mean? <laughs> Leave him alone. Get rid of him. He's out of the church. Well, that's what some people want to think. That they're what's what's the word? Well, uh, what's the word? Uh, yeah. Excommunicated. Excommunicated. Well, it does that what that means? Not exactly. It doesn't. No. What is a heathen? Someone who needs to come back into the church. That's right. Uh, now, you are, I guess in a way, he said consider them a heathen. In other words... No, no. He did. It says, unto thee as an heathen. Well, yeah, that's what it, yeah, as a heathen. In other words, someone who needs work. Yeah, exactly. Not to be taking their word for... In other words, they need help more than you're going to get help from them. Let's take our conversation before the camera ever started today. Yeah. Thing is, when we have situations in our life and negative thing, uh, negative outcome, whatever, whatever it is, negative outcome, then mm -hmm. we have witnesses. Well, there's witnesses. It's the same situation. Yeah, there's people around. Really there's people yeah. around that know knows what happened. Okay, and they discussed it. Couldn't resolve the information, the, the issue. We brought it to the church. Okay, and and we came to a mutual agreement. Heard each other of how to to deal with this and about faith. Then that was a positive outcome. Well, this is what our Father wants for this heathen. He no. wants a positive outcome for this person. Nobody got up and walked out and said, well, I'm not going to listen to you. In other words, they didn't leave the church. Mm -hmm. Right. See? Yes. Here's the big problem with today. Yeah. People keep leaving the church because they didn't like the message. <laughs> It's a hard message. Well, it's always a hard message yeah. if it's truth yeah. and they're not living truth. 
It's always a hard message. Well, it's not only the message if they have a disagreement with someone. Well, Over whatever the case may be, you don't leave where you're being fed. Right. <laughs> you know, and have we all dealt with this even in our own little congregational world? <laughs> and people have left because they were angry. And I've said to you guys, if I said this once, I've said it a hundred times. You got a problem? Let's discuss it. Let's talk about it. We may disagree. We may even come to the conclusion that we agree to disagree. But to leave where you're being fed, and, and what's the problem with that? Because of what happens when they leave. I've seen situations over and over and over again. didn't get better. Got worse for them. They usually go astray. I hate to say it, but they've always gone astray. When well, you're starving, mm -hmm. you know you eat. You know, and it's sad. Yes. Breaks my heart. But I see it all the time. We need, just like a marriage. We need to keep open communication. When you stop the communication, you stop living. And this is what our Father is trying to teach us. Look, you got a heathen here. You treat him as a heathen and a publican, a tax collector. Well, guess what? Who did Christ call? Yeah, he would go and have dinner with them. And he did. And he even chose a couple for his disciples. Well, not a heathen. Well, I guess at the they time were they probably were, heathen at the beginning. <laughs> when he first met them, they might have been. <laughs> you, know, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not their judge, but... <laughs> anyway, that's funny. But how would they be treated differently than in relation to being... A because they're put back at square one where, uh -huh. where right. you're, 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 you, you right. start over right. in teaching. Right. You build up the foundation again. Not you go back... You go back to milk Christianity right. to get him to the meat. Yeah, let's start over again. And what did he kept doing with through. the disciples? Repeating, repeating, repeating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How little faith. Now, these are guys that are going out healing people. He's giving power and authority. Oh, ye of little faith. How much longer am I going to have to be here with you? They would do stupid That's things. going back to square one. That's what, you know, Christ kept saying, look, I'm going to die, I want to resurrect. I'm going to die, I want to, I'm going to die, I want to resurrect. Why do you have to re keep repeating that? Because they're not hearing him. They weren't there at the tomb on the third day waiting for him. None of them were. Thank you. None of them were. Uh. So, it goes into verse 18. Verily, or truly I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth. Now here he's talking to his disciples, the, the ones that are going to be operating the church. Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Loosed meaning what? Treat them as, as publicans and, 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 and heathen. That's being loosed. That's being loosed from the, the inner circle, so to speak. That's being loosed from the meat operation mm -hmm. of learning and taken to the milk operation. He didn't say get rid of them. No. He didn't say kick them out of the church. Now, that's what a lot of people teach. That right. That's what that meant. Right. Well, if you're loose, that means you're loosed out of the church. How can you help someone if they're loosed out of the church? What hope would they have? Now, they can leave. You know what? Which they do today. Yes. That's actually... It just the light you were you it's done any I wanna agree a hundred percent. You actually are now instructed to give them even more love and attention because they are even in public and they need you more now than ever. As long as they stay in the family, the church group. Well see you can't help someone that's not around. Right. How can you help somebody right. that doesn't want to be helped? You know, kick them out, you say, Look, yeah. I'm going to have to spend extra time with you. <laughs> Remember the last time we got together about the lamb? <coughs> Leaving the 99 and going and getting the oh. one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you try to make things work, mm. but it's ultimately up to the individual. Mm. 
whether or not they want to accept it or not. But you got to do your part. Got to do your part. Got to do your part. Yes. I understand. Again, verse 19. <laughs> Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Now, a lot of people think you get two people together and you pray over somebody, they're going to be instantly healed. That's not what this is talking about. This is talking about the, the, the inner workings of a church. And you get, you get a couple people together in the church, and you, you, you pray over someone, you go to someone, you deal with a certain individual or even a group. And, and their prayer will be answered. But there's a, a condition here. The condition is, is that person needs to be a part of the church. They need to be a part of, of, of the congregational setting. And if you come together and you pray over this person and you, and you agree that, let's say this heathen needs to have special instruction, then our Father is going to answer that prayer and heal and help and mend. But after all, the reason he's doing that is because that person that neg negated everything, that neglected everything, that turned away from everything, is at, at least at that point wanting to be a part of it. They may not agree at that point. They may have a problem with whatever situation that's going on in the church or an individual, or even a pastor. But they're willing to be there to work it out. There's a second part, though. What? That's the two or three that gathered in, in Ash. Not only is it the outsider or, or the, the, the transgressor have to want it, but the two brothers or three brothers gather together. If they go to God and say, look, He's important enough for me to go after. Would you help? He'll come help. Yes. yes. He'll, 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 if that heart can be turned, he will. But let's not lose focus. Let's yeah. take it all the way down. I hate using the, this terminology, yeah. but let's take it all the way down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. That person that everybody's having a problem with mm -hmm. is at least willing yeah. to accept yeah. the consequences of the church. They make themselves available to be spoken to. <coughs> because to be let's, yelled, let's to face be it, the, the, the person we're talking about here they had, problems, had a problem with something that happened in the church or an individual in the church. Had a problem with it. Okay? But the point is they're not willing to accept. They're not willing to accept any input on the subject. To the point when certain situations <coughs> that we've dealt with in the past, they've left. They just flat out left and didn't want no part of it. What can you do at that point? He tells you. What does he tell you? He said two or three, whatever will come will be loosed in heaven, whatever will be bound on earth will be bound in heaven. And if you ask me, I'll have it done. If it can be found. It didn't say if, it says it will be done. It will be done, but the, the point yeah. I'm trying to make... Ross, with the situation is that you've got to be around to hear the... Yes. All the, I'm saying is it's both. It's a two-way street. It is. If no one in the church cares, if he leaves, he's going to stay gone. If at least two people care, it's a good chance he'll yeah. come back. You're, you're right. You're right. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. He's, he's putting a responsibility on both sides because they're both... At one time, they were both brothers. Mm-hmm. They were all, all in the same family. If your family member leaves, you can say, well, it's all your fault. Or you can say, you know what, maybe I do need to go over to his house and have dinner with him mm -hmm. and ask him to come back. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I at least or go and that find out him. what the problem was. Yeah, I at least got to go outside and look for him. I can't just let him stay gone. That's where that's where the our teachings sheep. of our sheep came yes. from. So in verse 20 it says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Yes. Why? Because you have a consensus, an agreement. And you got the shepherd there helping you, you find the sheep. 
and this happened. This has happened to us. Yes. This has happened to as many people as I, I can remember right. in church settings. Yes. That's why you have so many different denominations. Mm -hmm. Why do you have so many different part? denominations? Because you had people that disagreed with whatever was going on at the time. So they split and started their own. And didn't care enough to come back or go to them. Or didn't care better. enough to communicate. Yes. Yes. See, our Father does not want division. He doesn't want division. He wants us to work together. So what do you do in a situation that a person, let's say, has moved away? Call them once in a while. Invite them to dinner. <laughs> right? Yeah, okay. up to a point. Right How many times are you fixing to get yeah, out? Yeah, we're fixing to get okay. out. All right, verse 21. Good lesson. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord... How oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Hey, that's, that's a lot of times for me to forgive. <laughs> so he was probably, hey, I'm going to forgive this well, guy no, seven really. times. What does Jesus say? Verse 22, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Now, basically, seven is a spiritual number, meaning spiritual completeness. But this 70 times seven doesn't mean 490 Nine. times or whatever the case may be. It means you forgive him as many times as he needs to be forgiven. Yes. In other words, it never stops. The infinite patience of God. But what does it take to forgive someone? See, this this is a thing that I used to struggle with. I walk, yeah. better said, I had I had the wrong information. Oh, <laughs> even worse. I had the wrong information. <laughs> you know, I thought, well, and I even thought <coughs> this, which was incorrect. Mm. That to be forgiven, mm. you have got to have someone ask for forgiveness. No, you don't. I used to, I used to think it many, and teach it. I know people. you did, Where but it's that? wrong. I know. Well, did you leave the church? No. Why not? Because I can disagree with you. Yes, she did. <laughs> Thank you. And usually if I disagree with you, I don't say anything because sooner or later you're going to come up and tell me, hey, you know what, I was saying that wrong. Or vice versa. <laughs> or vice versa. Or vice versa. Hey, you know what, I thought he was wrong, but he wasn't. That too. Okay, then. But the point is, um, we are to uh. forgive... Even, if, Even if a person doesn't ask for forgiveness. You have to. Why? Because you do, but it, why? Because it's the destruction to your whole mind, body, and soul. Why does it destroy you? Because it is a... It'll eat you alive. It'll, it'll eat you alive. alive. It's negative. Uh -huh. negative. It's a negative, angry, resentful. All the negative feelings that you can name are rolled up in that ball of unforgiveness well, so and the longer you have that unforgiveness the more of a cancer it becomes and it colors your entire world and every way you react to others now let's just think about what happened this morning yes well and it's written let's just, so what? let's just think about what we talked about without going all over through it again this morning before we started, how angry and upset we can get. And we, we know what we know and why we know it. But you know what? There's a big thing that has to come. A big thing that has to come to our lives is forgiving ourselves. Even though we screwed up. We screwed up. And we know we screwed up. And we know why we screwed up. But there's an end to that story. The end to that story is forgiveness. Because without the forgiveness, <coughs> you can't go on. You can't get to heaven. And that means going on. Yeah, I know. That's what I was saying. It's written much simpler. It is. You <laughs> forgive trespasses, I forgive those who trespass against me. If you don't forgive... I ain't gonna forgive you. But you see, you just like what, what Beck was bringing out, and what the Word is bringing out, is that you know what, we're quick to forgive others at times. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for us to forgive ourselves at times. But you better do it. Thank you.
I don't argue with a fact. You can't. <laughs> There's the truth. You, you can argue with me. No. You argue with the word, you got problems. No. So, 70 times 7. Therefore, 23, is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king. He gives us a parable here. Which would take a, account of his servants. He wanted to check on his servants. <clears throat> I'm going to get into here in a few minute, moments about there's a big discrepancy in this book hmm. from the manuscript. Hmm. Listen, verse 24. And when he had begun to reckon, uh -huh. now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this book is wrong. I'm just saying the manuscript is right. Mm -hmm. And when he had begun to reckon, think about them, talk to them. One was brought unto him, one of the servants, which owed him 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents, beloved, is $52,800,000 in silver. $52 million in silver. 25 But for as much as he not had, he had not to pay. He didn't have the money. Well, duh. His Lord commanded him to be sold. Now, this was law back then. You could do this. I hate using the term as a master, but we'll say that as a lord, lowercase l, and a servant, and his wife, and children. Oh, he had so long to get to fit. And all that he had, all of his possessions. Wow. And payment to be made. In other words, whatever he had was to be forfeited. Sounds like our tax system. I'll never mind that yeah. on YouTube. <laughs> payment to be made. That was a joke, by the way. 26. The servant, therefore, fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord. Now, how does that word Lord read in your Bibles? Is it uppercase L? Lord. Mine's capital L. Mine's capital L. Mine's lowercase. Mine's capital L. It is uppercase, and it should not be. Okay. Saying unto him, Lord, have patience. Yeah. With me, and I will pay the all. I'll pay you back fifty-two million eight hundred thousand dollars in silver. I say dollars, but it's silver. Now, first of all, this uppercase L on Lord mm -hmm. should not be there. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it shouldn't be there at all. Mm -hmm. Lord is not in the manuscript, mm -hmm. nor is and worshipped him. Mm -hmm. I didn't think so. It's not in the manuscript. Mm. And guess what? What's even more bad about this? This isn't written in italics as it was added later. Mm -hmm. So who put this in? <laughs> well, knowing what you yeah. know about Kenites and being scribes of the law. Yeah. But all of that is all true. However, when it was being read and understood by us, we knew exactly what this parable is and why. In the parable sense, it's yes. as if we're talking to God, the Lord. This is this is our instruction. I now, understand, you... Ross, but the fact of the matter is, we've got to look at this as anybody reading I this. Know. I know, but we're not anybody. And we're t we got we got to when we run across something like yeah. that, we need to make note of it, yeah. so we can teach it properly. Right. That's now, true. what this actually says in the manuscript, mm -hmm. the servant therefore fell down saying, have patience yeah. with me, and I will pay thee all. That's right. all it says. Right. Not talking about the Lord, not talking about <coughs> worship. Oh, worship that's what mine right. says. Oh, you're saying it doesn't say worship. It doesn't, doesn't have worship, yes. or it doesn't have Lord in there. Right, right. It just says he fell down, and then skips all the rest, and says, have patience. Have patience I with see. me, and I will pay thee all. Gotcha. Verse 27, Then the Lord, you notice, now I lowercase l. Right. That means the, the servant's master is all it means. Yeah. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. He, he said, you don't owe me $52 million anymore. Wow. Now, talk about forgiveness. Yeah. Now, that's what I call being moved with compassion. Mm -hmm. But, 28 says, the same servant, the one that was forgiven, went out 
and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. You know what that is? Forty-four dollars. <laughs> Forty-four dollars and silver. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Grabbed him by the throat for 44 bucks, and the guy just got out of 52 million. 29, and his fellow servant fell down at his feet. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say worshipped him, it says it properly. Fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. 30, and he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Well, how is he going to pay a debt being in prison anyway? I mean, stupid is as a stupid does. Mm -hmm. yeah. 31. So, when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry. They were ticked. Mm -hmm. And came and told unto their Lord all that was done. <coughs> and they went back to the original... <coughs> Uh, uh, the uppercase Lord. Lord. No, <laughs> not uppercase Lord. I don't know where I'm doing with that. <laughs> then his Lord, 32, after that he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. You you asked. And I, get, I let you loose of $52 million in silver. 33. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant? Notice, fellow servant. He was just like him. Even as I had pity on thee. 34. And his Lord was wroth. He is tipped. <laughs> and delivered him to the tormentors. In other words, they put him in prison. Put him in jail. Till he should pay all that was due unto him. How's he going to pay fifty-two million in silver, being in prison? The same way that guy had over right. forty-four bucks. Mm -hmm. So what's the point with all this? No. Very simple. Yeah. Well, we've been covering all day today. <laughs> Thirty-five. So, this is your Lord speaking, Jesus Christ. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. If ye, from your hearts, forgive not every one his brother their trespass. Even the little ones? All. Little everyone means everyone. You know, I have, to, I have to say, how many times do we say we forgive? But deep down in our hearts, we have it. What happens to us? No, seriously, we've all forgiven people before. I know that. But what happens to us when we truly forgive someone for, for sinning or behaving badly or whatever? You have peace about it. Your debts are relieved. Well, yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, I'm saying you personally. Yes, that burden is lifted. It's gone. <clears throat> yeah. Why? Why is it gone? I well, mean, what? 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 What's the catalyst? What, because what you're not that? harboring any hate in your soul. Hate. Yeah, Ill feelings. Yeah. You're so not now, so now we're moving anger. it into. It is. It's all the same. Yeah. So what happens? <clears throat> Have you ever forgiven someone verbally? Yet yeah, you keep thinking about it over. And over, and over, and over, and over. Why do we keep thinking on these things if we've forgiven them over and over and over again? You're just fooling yourself. So have you really forgiven them? Not if you don't. You know, I think forgiveness is a process. It is a process. And I think I've experienced this on a very personal level. It should always be on a very personal level. Well, in, it has been my experience that when the memory resurfaces and those feelings come along with it, I take it right back to God. Because I wasn't able in the first place to forget the person myself. And I told him that. I said, I can't do it. You have to do it for me. So any time that old anger and resentment and wells up in me, then I remember and I take it back to God. I say, 
hear it and forgive me. Please forgive me. Help me to forgive. So does that memory, since you had the memory, mean always that we haven't forgiven? No. I think, in my own case, I will always remember. But I have forgiven because I can remember it now without tears. I can remember it now without anger. And when I remember it, I turn myself away from it. I won't let other people even talk to me about it. So in other words, it's not, even though it will always be a big thing, mm -hmm. but it's not so important to us anymore. Other no, than it's not memory. important at all. Correct. Not at all. Yes. I think a lot of times when it comes back to our memory, it's just reminding us of how awesome and great Father is, and He leads us back to those things and reminds us that, you know, that He did that for us. Therefore, but the grace of God yeah. is alive. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, what happens then when we truly forgive? It's not that we forget. But you heal. But you heal. There's a yeah. healing process. Yeah. In other words, that pain that we originally felt is no longer there. Correct. Yes. But you have to keep taking it back. You have to keep working at it. It's not something you can say one prayer one time and it's done. Maybe other people can. I cannot. But well, it me, depends it was, on the situation. Right. It was a process of years for me. Depending on how deep... Yes. The yes. hurt was. Yes. It yes. takes longer and it to heal the deep ones. It yes. takes time. Just Thank like you. like your analysis yes. of a wound. Yes. Yes. You can have a scratch or yeah. you can have a or deep a gorge. Yes. And here's another effect that, that we haven't talked about. That the person being forgiven feels forgiven. Not necessarily. Not, not, not always. Not well, always, no. but I'm saying in my case, hmm. you know, be, and I believe it's because they really did forgive them. If they try to bring it up, I say it's forgotten. It's forgiven. Well, see, you, you still have open communication. communication what happens... That and, was hard. Yeah, well, what happens in a lot of situations, one side can forgive when the other side is hard-hearted. Mm -hmm. And they will not accept. Right. They say they do. <laughs> but there's no further communication. Right, right. That's different. There's no further brotherhood. All you can help then is yourself. You can't help them. Exactly. That's when the Word tells us to let go and let God. In other words, there's nothing more you, yourself, mm -hmm. can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, on occasion, as our minds wander we may think of certain negative situations that's happened in our past with other people and that that will present itself but just as we already come to a conclusion when we have truly forgiven it's just a passing thought now we don't dwell on it mm -mm. here's another thing when you truly have forgiven you will not say to yourself when those things come up into your mind what could I have done to do better? Well, of course not. Mm -mm. It's done. Because at that point, it is finished. Yes. It's complete. Well, not complete because the negative situation on the other side. See, I'm talking about there's two different things. One is you forgive and the brotherhood comes together and everybody lives you know, in a happy rose tea garden, you know, hypothetically. But you also have one where you forgive but the other one is not willing to accept that forgiveness. Mm -hmm. See, I've seen situations where both sides have said, I forgive you. But there's no communication farther. Mm -hmm. To which I say, it didn't really that's not true forgiveness. No, no. it didn't really happen. It took me about yeah. ten years to talk to the person. After the first time I forgave them. It took me a good ten years. So, did you forgive them, or? Yes, I had to get. Well, why, had, why did it take ten I, years? It then? took a long time it took to the get, ten years to get the done. bleeding to stop. Yeah. It took a long time to get the wounding. Well, that's yeah. where I'm going with this. Yeah. Can you truly forgive 
and uh, have that forgiveness truly done if you're still bleeding. No. It's a process, Pastor. Right, right, right. That's it takes time. He's just asking, is it healed yet or not? It is now, Thank all you. these many years later. Then, right. you, at that point, it was you fun. have forgiven. Yes. Yes, but, but I was until in that, the process of it, and you can't discount the process. No, mm -hmm. but that's not My forgiveness, forgiveness may take me ten years. Yours may be immediately. Now, these days, I'm, I'm one of the easiest people to forgive. Boom, I'll forgive you. Half the time, I don't even realize I should have to forgive you. I, I'm not mad at you to begin with. But back then, when I was open and bleeding and wounded, and everybody around me was pointing their fingers, shame on you. So what you're saying then, without forgiveness, you're still mad. Yes. <laughs> so it's a process. You have to let it heal. So forgiveness. You have to work at it. What you're telling me. <clears throat> That in certain situations, forgiveness isn't instantaneous. No. Forgiveness is a choice. Yes, it's a choice. Forgiveness is but a you're, choice. Well, but what you're telling me in certain situations, if I'm hearing correctly, that in certain situations that forgiveness cannot be immediate. Right. It I'm telling time. you it's a process. Well, yes. I'm telling you times. what I believe. If we understand this fullness of forgiveness, it can always be instantaneous once we learn it. A Christ-like forgiveness is instantaneous. Is well, isn't that what we're all looking for? Yeah, he just said it right He's there. hanging on a cross. Yep. He said it right there in a minute. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Isn't, isn't the bottom line basically the condition of your heart? Yes. My point being is about forgiveness is that under certain situations what 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 Becca's example was is that she believes that forgiveness, some forgiveness, is a work in progress and it takes sometimes a long period. Mm -hmm. What I believe is is that when that happens, it takes you a long period to learn forgiveness. Well, yeah, but True forgiveness can be instantaneous. But you know what? We're all children. We're all children. We're all work in we're progress. And we're all not and Christ. And here's what I, I comfort myself with. At least I tried. Yes. At least God let me know, okay, kiddo, here's what you got to do. Let's work with it. Have you ever seen this on television? Oh, no little kids in here. A little child was murdered. Oh, God. Raped and murdered. Yeah. Okay, terrible. Yeah, can't think of anything worse for, no. for a parent. Nope. Mm -hmm. And that parent gets right in front of the TV screen and says, I forgive that person. Yeah. Now we look at that. You said, yeah, no, the maybe cold maybe. day. <laughs> you know. I know. But you know what? Was that person just lying? I don't know. Or was that person truly? Well, you know what? It could be. If a person is truly with the Lord yeah. and understands the fullness of the kingdom yeah. and where that child truly is at that moment, mm -hmm. that person is able to forgive that yeah. person. You've got the Christ-like forgiveness. Well, that's the, that's the key. I mean, my own personal experience, I went to, through a two- to three-year period that I had to basically ask the Lord to take the baggage from me mm -hmm. because it was more of a guilt feeling mm -hmm. than it was I didn't forgive them. Mm-hmm. So that's what I had to work through. And it kept coming to mind constantly. At times. So, in that period, he still hadn't forgiven. No. Well, I said I had. He said, that's my point. That's it. Her intent. We say the words. Mm -hmm. That's your intent. That's yeah. your intent. That's the. I didn't want to be thought. angry anymore. It's basically the reason why I, I forgave. Because the situation was I, I was angry at the end result. Mm. And I didn't want to be angry with so the here's, here's situation. So here's anymore. where I'm going with this. Maybe this will reiterate here. Mm -hmm. You forgave the other person, but you didn't forgive yourself. Oh, yeah. Right. No. Exactly. That's the key. Yes. That's the key. To have instantaneous forgiveness. <clears throat> yes, you can forgive the other person, yeah. but you've got to forgive yourself. Right. And then the burden is lifted. Yeah. 
because you learned what it truly meant to forgive. Mm -hmm. And that's when that's when all the pressure's off. Mm -hmm. Right. All the guilt is gone. All the guilt mm -hmm. will be gone. That's why I said to you earlier, you have peace. it will happen. Yes. You have peace about today. the situation. Don't know that. No, I don't Today's know. Today's not over, Rob. I know. <laughs> but I so I was laughing at her. I said, you know, I intend to fix my car today, but it ain't fixed. So it don't matter. <laughs> yeah. I haven't fixed it. I think the intent of your heart does matter. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think it absolutely but matters. See, yeah, but see, half the battle. That's half the battle yeah. because you've got to forgive yourself mm -hmm. in all these situations. Because ultimately, it's good, It's just like the, the scenario of, of the seven stages of death. Mm -hmm. Grief, you mean? Grief. Yeah. Grief. <laughs> don't have seven no. stages of death. You're dead, you're dead. <laughs> seven stages of death. It's a process. It's a process. <laughs> well, we no, look no. at that. We look at that because we no. have a tendency of no. going through all these steps. Yes, we forgive the other person. But you know what? We're still carrying around all this baggage. Mm -hmm. And to truly forgive is that we're no longer carrying baggage. you got to let it go. And that's so easy to say. We say it all, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you. But the thing is, we're still hanging on to these... Well, you know what? Once you totally forgive, you're not hanging on to anything anymore. No. It's gone. Still remember, but you know what? It doesn't affect us anymore. It's not that we don't care. We still care. But that hurt, that resentment... That negative feeling, those negative emotions, mm -hmm. all the things that Satan is just stroking them coals, mm -hmm. is no longer there. He has no control over our sin. Because we have thoroughly, just like Christ, forgiven him. And that's what he's teaching us here today. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments? Good lecture. Let us pray. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for opening up our discussion, allowing the Holy Spirit to flow freely. I pray for everyone here today and those on the ether waves on YouTube and beyond that you watch over all and their families. You lead, guide, and direct us. And forevermore, we will give you all glory, honor, and praise. For we do love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strengths, and with all our souls. For it is in Yahshua's precious holy name we pray. Amen. To God be the glory.